So you say you got out in 84? No, I got out in 2004. No, no, but originally you said- I came back home from Chicago. I got kicked out of the state of California in 2000, in, um, 82. 82. Yeah, they, they kicked me out and told me I couldn't come back until- Wait, they kicked you out of the state of California completely? Yeah, they used to do that. It was either go to the army or you had to leave. Oh, they don't have rules like that anymore. Or no, they're just now starting to back to do it. Okay. Now that we're on the verge of, um, of um, like, I guess with this conflicts, they offering youngsters now that's in, um, okay. that's going to Sister Julian Hall the chance to go to YA. But with us back then, it was a lot of stuff that had happened. And I was on the run for about a year and a half. And um, so when they finally caught up with me, they couldn't find me guilty of, of a lot of stuff. So they only would release me to my father, and he was in Chicago, and that was mm -hmm. my first time meeting him. Okay. Like, as a kid, were you getting arrested at all, or, or not really? No. Okay, that started to come later. That started to come later. I mean, I got arrested a couple of times for robberies, but I didn't do no, no time, no juvenile time. Okay, so, so you, you come back to your neighborhood in 84, mm -hmm. and crack, crack hits yeah. South Central. What do you start doing at that point? Shoot, I can remember the first day I came back. Um, I just came to the block on 10th Avenue, all the homies was there, and everybody had thousands in their pockets. Like I'm talking about, everybody had thousands. And I'm looking like, so y'all doing it just from this? And it was, it was basically like shit, get in. Get in and get your check. The homies pulling up in farm whips and ragtop Mustangs is all over the uh, uh, all over the block, and it was uh, it was really get in and figure it out. All that is great in the beginning. The money starts coming, mm -hmm. and then the law starts to catch up with you. Yeah. Then I mean, well, really, if you look back at it in hindsight, it was more like uh, that started coming. Uh, the conflict with the homies started coming, the inside conflict, the bantering, um, the mistrust kicked in. With, 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 it was a lot of stuff came with cocaine. When cocaine came, it was, it, was, it, was, it was overwhelming because we were getting money and we didn't understand how, how it was affecting us. Hmm. You know, we went from, and it was two eras with me. It was, um, it was the era before I left and, and went and went to jail again in in um, two thousand. Got back out in two thousand. Uh, well, in, in um, eighty seven, and then went to Minnesota, and that's really kind of like when I really started getting a lot of money, and um, then I fell again in ninety one. But up until that era, it was kind of like the Boys in the Hood, like kind of like the real, like really like the Boys in the Hood movie. Mm -hmm. I think that's the closest I can say that's out there that can depict it. But the drugs. To me, it just kind of like destroyed the fabric of what we were. And, and it, um, it was, it was devastating to me because you really can only trust certain people. It became small, like your pocket became small with your homeboys. The LA Daily News did, a, did an article in 2004 and they said that the Rolling Sixties was the largest uh, gang in the city of Los Angeles with over 1,600 active members, the size of an army brigade. <laughs> That's the way they actually described it. Right. It, um, it was, um, I, I wouldn't say the largest. It definitely not the largest, but it definitely was, was more, let me say, at that time, it was more like I would say more family orientated. It was more about let me see. It was, it was like cause you know we, we all kind of related. You know what I mean? And, and like it's like I said, it's not homies moving in, homies moving out. So it's kind of like you there and you are, you are, you 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 there for a lifetime. You kind of figure like my mother owned this house. She gonna be here 20, 30 years, and next door neighbors gonna be there 20, 30 years. So it would look like is more uniform than it, than it really was. You know what I mean? It, it, and um, even to this day, even to this day, I would say that now that we're at the lowest we are in, in violence mm -hmm. in LA, California violence is, yeah. 
we have more love for each other than I see a lot of other people have. I mean, we, we talk about that area, and you talk about especially in the, in the 80s, there was a war that was happening. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, you know, you, you always hear about the, the war with the a tray that goes back like 30 years. Right. And I read about the, the origins of that, of that whole mm-hmm. beef, and I guess a fight happened, someone got killed, and the other side wanted payback, and that didn't happen, and then 30s or 40 years now, that's been happening? Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> You're talking about multi-generational, well, over 40 years. multi-generational beef mm-hmm. that started with someone that people probably have never even met. At the, you right. know, didn't, didn't even know. These days have no idea who that is and so forth. You're living in the middle of all this. Mm-hmm. And, and with, this, with this kind of mentality where there's at any point you don't know who you're going to run into, there, there, there's beefs, you know, and I, you know, on a level that goes back decades. What, what, was, what was that like to actually go through that and why do you think that that never got fixed early on? Well, I'm going to say this. Um, it definitely was, the, 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 it's bigger than, kinda, it's kind of bigger than what I probably can explain in one sitting, but 79 is, um, is where it actually happened because it's, it's Crippen started in, 60, in, in 69. This is when they say the sea was born. Mm-hmm. The sea was born in 69, but in 79, the sea was, was split up. And more than, it's, more than it was a beef with the Rolling Sixties and the A-Tray Gangsters, it split up L.A. Yeah. Like when, when the Rolling Sixties and the A-Tray Gangsters started fighting, it split, it split L.A. in half. Right, because was that the first time that there was like a Crip on Crip that war? Was the first time Before then, it was just Crip's Bloods, but this is the Crips first time blood, that an right. inner Crip. War and it really, that. and really, uh, um, to my knowledge, it probably hadn't even been like three, four murders or three, four, you know, um, really killings at all between Crips and Blood, between Crips and Bloods up until '79. So what happened in '79, when that beef started, it it kind of it exasperated the beefs all over LA because it went from just it went from just fighting to actually now it became like an arms race. And yeah. it changed LA. And what people don't understand is it changed LA in the fact that where now you had to either decide you was gonna be with the neighborhood car or you was gonna be with the gangster car. And it split the gangs of LA up. Yeah, everyone had to take sides at that point. Everyone had to take sides. Yeah. And it became bigger. Cause like really, um, I think um the one thing I agree with Monster Cody in his book is that it really ain't been a war with us in the A-Trays because they went where they went and we went. So it ain't really been a war. I mean, I can't really say where it's been, even when I was in the streets and in, in I can't say that in, in the last 20 years I ever even worried about, or I don't even think none of the kids over there even worry about, about you know, that fraction. Not to, I don't want to start nothing new, but it's like, in the last real last twenty years, okay, that ain't been there. 